Hi, and welcome back to LW Pharmacy School channel. It is Lindsay with you tonight, and I am so excited to be here with you um, tonight, today, this evening, this morning, wherever you may be, whatever time it is where you are. Uh, I feel like I haven't seen you guys in so long. I know I missed my video last week because we were super busy here and dealing with enrollment. Um, and so I was being pulled out of the office, but today I made the time to be here. If this video has been helping you, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. Hit the subscribe button, ring um, the bell for notifications so you can be notified every time we post a new video. As always, this video is being brought to you by LW Pharmacy School serving you through education. We are a 15 week online pharmacy technician course that produces success. Shout out to all my friends all over the country who, has passed, who have passed their PTCD or EXPTC exam by using LW Pharmacy School YouTube channel or maybe by taking a course or even by, you know, uh, doing some tutorial sessions with me. So I'm super excited. I am going to jump into it today. Also, make sure that you tell your friends your cousin your auntie your brother your uncle your friends everybody that you know that lw pharmacy school is helping you get right okay we're helping you get your certification exam uh passed so that way you can get your certificate today we're going to talk about patient safety and quality assurance um this video will definitely cover the 2020 requirements and all of the new 2020 laws that are out there that a lot of you guys have asked me about. Towards the end of the video, we're gonna talk a little bit about, we're gonna do some PTCD practice questions. So hang tight, okay? I don't want this video to be super long. Patients right. Remember that the patient has the right to the right drug, the right dose, the right dosage form, the right route of administration, and then the right time of administration. Okay, I need you to understand that as a patient, they have the right to these things. So there is no way that they should be denied the right drug, which is whatever the doctor prescribes, right? So if the doctor prescribed amoxicillin and we don't have amoxicillin in the pharmacy, it's not okay for us to give them cephalexin because that's not the right drug, okay? Uh, the right dose, let's say the doctor said that they are to take um, 15 milligrams you know, um, before bedtime. But we did the wrong calculation and instead of 15 milligrams, we got 20 milligrams and that's what they got. So now we have violated their rights and we have caused a medication error, which we're gonna get into a little bit further. The right dosage form. So dosage form is what? A tablet, a capsule, uh, a solution, uh, a syrup, okay? So they have the right to the right dosage form. So if a doctor wrote it for capsules and we only have tablets, that's not the same thing. Okay, so we definitely need to contact the doctor to let them know, hey, this is what we have, so on and so forth, okay? Uh, the right route of administration. So that means that if they, you know, if the doctor said one capsule by mouth, the route of administration is the by mouth part. Okay, so that means that we can't tell them to take this capsule per vagina or per rectal, right? Uh, we have to give it to them by mouth. Um, and then also, you know, if, if it's something that was written per rectal or per uh, vagina, we want to make sure that we are routing it to the right spot because you don't want to give a patient something by mouth that should have went per rectal or by mouth that should have went per vagina or by mouth that should have went in the eye, okay? Or even in the ear. Uh, that could be horrible, horrible, okay? So we wanna make sure that we are giving them the right amount, the right of, uh, the right route of administration. And then the right time of administration. So if the doctor wrote it for bedtime or if the doctor wrote it before every meal, you know, um, they have the right to the right time of administration. So if the doctor was very specific about before meals or before bedtime, um, then we need to make sure that we as pharmacy technicians translate that onto the label. Uh, you can't just say, take it by mouth daily. 
if the doctor said by by mouth at bedtime, you have to be very specific about when that patient is supposed to take the medication. It is their right, people. Prescribing errors. Let's talk about it. What does the prescribing errors come from? Oh my God, I'm so glad that you asked me. Prescribing errors come from the doctors, okay? Because they are the ones who prescribe the medication, okay? Um, the route of administration not specified. So if a doctor, you know, you get a script, you're in the pharmacy and the doctor does not specify what route of, a medic of administration this particular medication should go, then that is a prescribing error. Let's say the patient has uh, some type of allergy, okay? And when they get to you, you know, maybe they didn't share or maybe the doctor didn't convey that um, in the script or maybe the patient didn't convey it to the doctor, however it went. But when they got to the pharmacy and all of a sudden they're allergic to penicillin, but here they are with a prescription for amoxicillin. Now, you know amoxicillin and penicillin is cousins. Oh yeah, they're cousins. They both end in filling. So ultimately, this person may need to be on some type of mycin, or they may need to be on Zithromax or something like that, um, other than the ceilings, okay? And so, you know, if the doctor prescribed the ceiling to a person who was allergic to penicillin, that is a prescribing error. Incorrect strength of medication. We just talked about that a little bit. Patient needed 10 milligrams because of their weight and height. Doctor gave them five milligrams. So ultimately this patient is not getting the, the optimum care or the best care that they should get because now they are getting inadequate strength of medication, which is not going to take care of what the uh, patient is dealing with. Incomplete medication name. You know, doctor writing off fast, they didn't really complete the medication name. And sometimes the doctor will have the nurse to um, fill out the directions on the prescription. You know, they'll tell their nurse to do it. So any, either way, when it comes from the doctor's office, that doctor is responsible for it because that doctor is the head of that particular office. So even if the nurse made the, the mistake, the doctor ultimately has to take the fall for it. Uh, quantity and refills omitted. So if the doctor didn't put on there how many quantity they're supposed to get, how many refills, that's so, so on and so forth. So let's say that there was additional directions that were required. Um, I know that like steroids, like the, the, the med dose pack steroids, there are some stair stepper directions that go along with that. And if the doctor did not provi provide that at the time of them writing the prescription, this, that, and the third, then it's, you know, it's possible that that patient could, you know, uh, not get everything that they need and that falls back on the doctor. Causes of prescription errors. We're still talking about the doctor because, um, well, I'm not going to just say the, the doctor because at this point, we're talking about the doctor. We're also talking about the technician. We're also talking about the, the pharmacist. We're, we're talking about every person that is involved in medication therapy when it comes to this patient. Uh, the performance is um, up to all of us to make sure that we give the patient what they need. You know, this is kind of the reason too why prescriptions go through so many different hands because by the time it gets to the patient, if there was some type of error, somebody should have caught it, whether that was the pharmacist or the pharmacy tech or the pharmacist or, um, you know, whoever, the nurse, maybe before it got to the pharmacy. But it goes through a couple of hands because we are trying to make sure that everybody is looking at it and that we're all participating to ensure that the patient gets the best care that they actually need. Um, here, when we talk about causes of prescription errors, so improper documentation, you know, maybe it wasn't documented properly, uh, improper computer entry, that's a pharmacy technician um, issue. If we are doing the, the typing or the data entry of the script and you don't know what the abbreviation is, but you're new to that pharmacy and you don't want to seem like you don't know what you're doing, so you don't go and ask, and now this prescription has been passed on to another patient or to the patient, and it wasn't right. Um, 
However, if your pharmacist is paying attention, they should catch it before it goes on because they are supposed to do the drug utilization review, which is the DUR. However, sometimes things do happen and it does get past the pharmacist. Um, let's see, commun communication, lack thereof or incorrect. We have to communicate, you know, it's our responsibility as technicians, as members who represent the medical world or medication therapy to communicate, open up your mouth and say something, right? To the person that you're talking, that you're working with, to maybe the patient, to maybe the customer, whomever it is. So we need to communicate properly. Handwriting is illegible or unclear. I did a continuing education course the other day. Yes, I do continuing education courses because I want to bring you the most effective and correct information that I possibly can to this channel. So I did a um, continuing education class. I swear I drew a blank. I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I was looking at that picture. Uh, but I did do, I did a community, a Continuing education class through the National Pharmacy Technician Association. So if you're not a member, you need to become a member of some type of association so that way you can get your continuing education classes free. And then you can stay in the loop of things that are happening in the pharmacy world and, and be up to date. But um, as I was doing my continuing education class, I noticed that Florida was on there. And Florida has just passed this law or state requirement um, and for the state of Florida, that if a doctor handwriting is illegible, um, if they cannot write legible enough, they have to type up their script. So that means that if a doctor writes like chicken scratch, that cannot go out. And if it does go out, their license is going to be revoked for a period of time and they could be fined and so on and so forth. But here's the thing. Florida has said we shut down. We shut this down. This handwriting, these medical errors that are happening because of illegible handwriting, we are closing that. We shutting it down. We're not going to have that anymore. And so shout out to Florida for taking the, the proactive step to protect their, their, their uh, people who you know, live in that, that state because quite a few errors are happening because of illegible handwriting um, you know, where people cannot read. The handwriting so you do want to be familiar with the different uh prescription errors that are happening organizations now let me just be honest when i am working with a, a student you know for the first time and they don't know these organizations i'm just going like how did you get through pharmacy tech school and you don't know who TJC, the FDA, or the ISMP is. Uh, you don't know who these organizations are. It, it concerns me a little bit because if you are already practicing in pharmacy, you should definitely be aware of who these people are or what these organizations stand for. I need you to remember that the, that the Joint Commission, the TJC, the Joint Commission, TJC, the Joint Commission, TJC, Food and Drug Administration, FDA. Who? FDA. Food and Drug, not federal. Food and Drug. Food and Drug Administration, not Food and Drug Agency. Food and Drug Administration, okay? Institute of Safe Medication Practices, ISMP. Institute of Safe Medication Practices. These are the three organizations that are here to correct any type of medication error. Now, there are some things that, that they have put in place, but these three organizations, they, they are in charge of making sure that medication errors are this much, okay? They are in charge of making sure that medication errors are no, they're obsolete. Look, they don't want them no more. They don't want to have them. They don't want them here. Um, with that being said, the Joint Commission, the Joint Commission, is the organization that looks after institutions, which is hospitals, rehab centers, nursing facilities, acute facilities, that type of place. The institution is any place where a patient resides on the inside. 
Food and Drug Administration. So these people are not only governing drugs, but they're also looking out for our food to make sure that our food is good, to make sure that our food is good and that it is being manufactured underneath the good manufacturing practices or processes, okay? Institute of Safe Medication Practices. So what these people have done, the ISMP, they have a do not crush list. They have a do not use list that includes abbreviations that also includes um, different type of medical terminologies that should not be used anymore in pharmacy because too many errors have been associated with that particular list. If you are not familiar with the ISMP, the FDA or TJC, I urge you, I encourage you to go and read upon them in your book. If your book does not cover them, you got the wrong book. You got the wrong book if your book does not tell you information about these three organizations. ISMP, FDA, and TJC and other safety conscious organizations have promoted the use of tall man lettering as one means of reducing confusion between similar drug names. Okay, so tall man lettering, um, I don't have a picture of it here, but tall man lettering would be like, uh, let's say we were spelling the word love, okay, and we had lowercase l, lowercase o, capital V, lowercase e. Or maybe we had a uh, capital L, lowercase o, capital V, lowercase e. Those are tall man lettering. And what, ultimately, what they're trying to do is to help the technician or whomever is compounding or preparing the medication for the customer to pick the right drug because we need to prevent medication errors as much as we possibly can. We don't want to lose anybody in the process of trying to heal a person or help to prevent or cure, or cure a disease or a condition, right? So again, TJC, FDA, ISMP, and there are some other safety conscious organizations that are out there, but TJC, FDA, and ISMP are the three organizations you need to remember. If you do not know them, write this down right now. If this channel has helped you to learn more about pharmacy technicians, has helped to enlighten you, has shed the light on what you did not know, has put you on solid ground, okay? Has put you in a place where you're like, oh my God, I can do this. I want you to subscribe to this channel. I want you to like us, like our video, and to ring the bell for notifications, okay? Because I truly enjoy working with you all. Um, it's always a pleasure to work with you guys. We're getting ready to go into dilution problems. And so if dilution or dilution, not dilution, I'm going to say dilution. If you've struggled with dilution problems, this is your, this is your, your channel. This is your video tonight. Shout out to all of my friends who have utilized this channel and who have passed their board exam using this channel and are now nationally certified. I am so proud of you. Not only am I proud of you and what you've been able to accomplish, but the fact that you stood still and you were determined and you didn't move off of trying to get certified and you didn't let people talk you out of your success, kudos to you. And you are a proof that if we continue on this journey, that one day they will, or we all will be certified together. So again, congratulations to you and shout out to all of my friends who are trying, who are up right now. You might be up, you might be three o'clock in the morning where you are, but you are pressing forward and I'm super proud of you. Uh, for a dilution problem, so let's look at this. A pharmacy has available one cup of a 10% iodine wash concentrate. The physician has ordered a diluted wash of 1%. One cup of 1% iodine wash is ordered. How many milligrams of 10% will be needed, okay? Um, and so this particular problem is going to be solved by using the initial strength times the initial volume equals the final strength times the final volume. What I like to see people do and what I like to see my friends do is to figure out what goes where and what we're solving for. So it says a pharmacy has available one cup of 10% iodine wash, right? 
So we know that the initial strength is 10%. Lindsay, how do we know that the initial strength is 10%? Because the percentage sign indicates that it is the strength. So if I said, okay, I got this water. Now I don't have anything in here but water, but we're gonna pretend that it's 10% lemon juice in here. So that would mean that the lemon juice is 10% and it is talking about maybe how strong the limit would be inside the water, okay? So that's how we know that the percentage sign represents strength because the percent sign tells us um, how much of something is represented inside of a substance or a solid or a liquid or whatever, okay? And then our initial volume is what we need to solve for. Um, and then we have our final strength. So we're looking, it says the physician has ordered a diluted wash of 1%. So our final strength is the 1% because that is what we need to end up with. Okay, so again, we started off with 10%. How do we know that? Because that's what we already have available. The physician ordered 1%. So if you were, at home right now watching this or wherever you may be and you're taking notes uh now you know if you got dilution problems and you know you need to be taking notes i don't even have to tell you get your paper and pen out you know i know some of y'all are listening to me on your way in to work or you know some of y'all might be listening to me tonight as you get ready to go to bed um if you are listening to me and you're in a place where you can't take notes make sure you go back and listen to this so that way you can get an understanding and a breakdown of how to label the numbers and the problems. I don't want you to use more numbers than you actually need to, okay? So a pharmacy has available, okay? So the reason why I know that available uh, or 10% is the initial strength because it says available and it follows that, okay? So available is a keyword. The physician has ordered. Ordered is a key word because 1% is going to be the final, uh, the final strength. And then it says, if one cup of 1% iodine washed is ordered, how many milligrams of the 10% will be needed? If one cup of the 1%. So now I know that my final volume is one cup one cup equates to 240 ml. So if you look down here at the bottom, I have tried my best to show you how to do this. The 10% is going to be the initial strength. The initial volume we are still solving for, okay? Um, and then we have the final strength, which is going to be the 1%. And the final volume is going to be the 240 ml, okay? We are going to multiply one times 240, that gives us 240, and we're going to divide that by 10%, and it gives us 24 milligrams, and that is going to be our answer. Somebody may say, well, Lindsay, I thought we were solving for initial volume. However, they wanted the final answer in milligrams, and so that's where we were going, that's what we're solving for. We still needed to use this formula. And so initial strength times initial volume, initial volume equals final strength times final volume, okay? The correct answer is 24 milligrams, and if you got B, your answer is correct. Prescription labeling. Sterile product prescription labeling sometimes differ from the label on an oral medication. Which of the following represents information that may be on a sterile IV that is not on an oral medication label? Okay, so let's take a look at this and I want you to just kind of look at, you know, what we're dealing with, okay? Um, so sterile products, where are sterile products compounded? Sterile products are compounded inside of a sterile room, right? So now we're looking at, it says sterile products compared to an oral medication, where oral medication is compounded in a community setting. So we, Walgreens, CVS, that sort of thing. Sterile would be institutional or maybe a closed door pharmacy. 
So now we know that we're comparing institutional to a closed door pharmacy. I'm sorry, institutional to a community pharmacy. Okay. Uh, let's look over here at our label. And we are going to see if we can match everything on this label, uh-oh, to what we have over here. So we see the patient's name, that's there. Do we see the infusion rate? Let me see. Oh, okay. The date of filling. Um, well, on here, the date is not on here either. Okay, and then the directions for use. Okay, that's actually not on here either. So that's not a really good example. Uh, but if we were going to utilize this inside of the hospital, we would have everything on there and everything on there except for the infusion rate. And the reason why we would not have the infusion rate on there is because those are directions that are used for compounding purposes as well as used um, and given to the doctor as well as the nurse and people who may be involved in the medication therapy process. But as far as uh, what the patient or what the actual label needs, it just needs the patient's name the date of the date that the medication was filled and the directions for use okay so unfortunately this label wasn't the best um however it was cool enough to use for our powerpoint tonight um and so anywho the correct answer is going to be b uh the one thing that may not be on the sterile iv product would be the infusion rate okay now um it says that might uh, which of the following represents information that might be on the sterile IV product that is not on an oral medication? So if we, you know, we're doing this for an oral medication, infusion rate would not be on there. Um, but if we were looking over here and we were doing it from IV, it would, you know, this is what would be on there. And then sometimes they do have different things that they add to the label as well. But for your clarification, B infusion rate would not be on an oral medication and just think about it it's an oral medication so why would they need to know the infusion rate they would need to know that um child dose so now we're going to talk about the child's dose in kilograms a 35 kilogram child is prescribed amoxicillin with a dosage of five milligrams per kilogram the pharmacy has in stock amoxicillin 50 milligrams per ml how many milliliters will the child be given in one dose? So we would do, um, first let's back up a little bit, okay? It says that the child is prescribed amoxicillin with a dosage of five milligrams per kg. So now we know that for every kilogram this patient or this kid weighs, they need to get five milligrams. So we're going to take five times 35 and that gives us 175 milligrams. Okay. So now we're going to look at, okay, what does the pharmacy already have in stock? Oh, they have in stock amoxicillin 50 milligrams per one ml. Remember I told you whenever you don't see anything in front of the ml, you automatically assume that it's a one. So at this point we would do 175 divided by 50. And that would give us the 3.5 mLs, and so the correct answer is A, okay? Uh, that one wasn't too, too hard, okay? Uh, the patient is right. A physician writes a prescription for a generic medication, but the patient requests the brand name. What should you do as the pharmacy technician? Should you contact the physician and ask if the brand name drug may be dispensed? Should you dispense the brand name drug to the patient? Should you dispense the brand name drug to the patient but have the patient sign the back of the prescription acknowledging that he or she requested the brand name drug? Or should you dispense the generic drug to the patient? If the doctor did not indicate dispense as written brand name or dispense as written generic name, or they didn't put, or maybe sometimes they may say substitution not allowed, if that was not put on the prescription, the patient has the right to pick the generic drug or they have the right to pick the brand name drug okay ultimately or a lot of times if a patient comes to the pharmacy with a brand name drug um, we automatically give them the generic it's normally what the pharmacy has on hand and it's a lot cheaper for the patient 
However, you may have a patient who says, I don't care if my insurance is not going to pay for brand name. It works for me. I want it. I'm going to pay for it. This is what I'm going to do for it. You say, okay, you give them what they want. You keep it moving. Okay. Um, when you get ready to give them what they want, you do want them to sign the back of the prescription stating that they did request the brand or the generic. It covers you, okay? So the correct answer would be C. The patient does have the right, as long as the doctor did not put on their brand name medically necessary or dispense as written, generic not, you know, not, um, what did they normally say, uh, no substitution, which means that the generic is not um, allowed to be used in this instance. If that is not on the script, the patient does have the right to choose what they want. However, in the pharmacy, we do want to make sure that we get proper documentation uh, in order to ensure that the patient is getting the correct medication that they actually need. Okay, let's talk about my two-day past seminar. Okay, so um, I have gotten calls all over the country, all over um, YouTube, Facebook, everywhere saying, Lindsay, we would love to do an in-class session with you. We need you. I need to take my test. I need to, you know, hurry up and get my test done so that way I can go and keep my job and so on and so forth. So you asked for it and now you got it. I am hosting a two day pass seminar in Houston, Texas, whoop, whoop, my city, uh, February 21st and the 22nd, right here in Houston. We're going to go to a conference room. We're going to be here at a, at a local hotel here in Houston, and we're going to have a great time. I'm bringing some friends with me. I'm bringing some people with me who have already utilized my help, utilized my service, and has been, have been successful. Um, we're going to do some hands-on labs, so that way some of the stuff that you are looking at and learning will start making sense to you. Some of my friends that are not... Um, that are not certified right now are telling me, I took a pharmacy technician course. I didn't learn nearly as much as I'm learning in this course that I'm learning from your YouTube channel. They had no hands-on. Lindsay, I'm a hands-on learner. I'm a visual learner. I need to do this. I need to see this. And so you asked for it and here it is, okay? We are doing a two-day past seminar. That's right, February 21st and the 22nd of this month in Houston. Call your mama, your cousin, your auntie, your brother, your little sister, and your little friend and tell them that LW Pharmacy School is hosting a two-day pass seminar to help you get board certified, okay? I don't know what you got to do. I don't know how you need to get here. I don't know where you are, but you do not want to miss this. This is going to be an opportunity for you to get a chance to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Also, let me let you know, seats are limited. Seats are limited, and I'm only doing this with the closest friends. Um, I'm sharing this with you right now because I know that this is something that you need. I know that you, you know, have struggled for too long, and this is time for you to really shine, okay? Uh, I want you here with me when I do this seminar. It would not be the same if you were not there. You have watched this channel long enough. You know exactly what you need to do. And this is where you should be, okay? I have worked with you. I've been consistent. I've been dedicated. I have helped you get what you needed to get a better understanding, to build the confidence, and now I'm going to take the test, okay? And so why not come and see me and let's hang out. Let's get to know each other. Some of you all I've never even seen, and I would love to see you and hang out with you, okay? We're going to turn up here in Houston. We're going to learn what we need to learn. At the end of this seminar, you will get a certificate of completion saying that you completed the seminar and that you are ready to go and take your board exam. I know that you and I together can do great things. We've already done them, and I know that this is going to take it to the next level. Stop putting off for to tomorrow what you can do today. Secure your spot today. The, the way that you need to register is by calling 903-295-5933, extension 101, okay? Today is February the 5th. This is happening February 21st and the 22nd. You've got two weeks to get here, okay? You can do it. You can do it. Look, I got friends who I know will go out and buy bundle hair. I got friends who I know will purchase a ticket at the last minute to go and see their favorite person, their favorite 
comedians and see their favorite celebrity, invest in you. You deserve it, okay? I am so excited. Every time I get the opportunity to work with you, it does me justice. It does me good. Um, whenever you guys call and you say, Lindsay, you helped me pass, or I didn't understand what this meant until you showed me. If you struggle with math, this is your time to get some one-on-one -on -one clarification on what you should be doing and how you should be doing it. I want to see you pass. Remember I told y'all 2020 is a winning year. We're going to win in 2020. We are going to win in 2020, 2020. We're going to win. Okay, if you've never seen clear before, 2020 is your year to obtain every goal, every, every, every vision that you've ever had, every promise that you've ever made yourself. You deserve it. You deserve to live your best life. Stop looking at everybody else live their best life. Stop saying to yourself, woe is me. I can't do this. Oh my God, everybody else. Oh my God, oh my God. It's you. This is your time, okay? This is your time. This is February the 5th. We are still in the beginning stages. Also, let me tell you, this year is a leap year. Leap year, if I'm not mistaken, come every four years. So this February, we will have 29 days and we won't see another 29 days in February until 2024. So this is your year. This is your month. This is your time to do something you've never done before. Look, February 2020 is the year of agreement, okay? So that means that this is not the time to do things by yourself. You want to know why you're not winning is because you've isolated yourself. It takes a team to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. When the vision is big, it takes a team to work together to get it done. There is no way that you can be all that you can be all by yourself. No. It takes a team. You need the support. You need the coaching. You need the one-on-one -on -one encouragement. You need the one-on-one -on -one experience to, in order to secure your path. Look, let me tell you something. You didn't come all this way. You didn't buy those books. You didn't spend all this time to get to this point and lose. Losing ain't even, look, we ain't losing ain't even the option. We winning in 2020. 2020 win. 2020 win, okay? So I want to see you in the place uh, February 21st and 22nd. Call me, 903-295-5933, extension 101. A friend from YouTube called me the other day. I answered the phone. She said, oh, my God, you're real. I'm like, yes, I am. I'm right here in the flesh. You want to get an opportunity to hang out with me, to get some of what I got on me, to rub off on you. I want to see your face in Houston. Come to my city. We have a great time in Houston. Houston is known for a fun time. I definitely want to see you here. Um, and I know that together you and I can win. Keep doing what you've been doing. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't feel like you can't do this. Don't let your doctor or your friend or your cousin or your mom or somebody tell you that you won't make it because you will. You know, somebody has just received a bad report from the doctor. Somebody may have just received bad news from their job. Somebody may be feeling like their spouse or whomever is getting ready to walk out on them. I want you to know that in 2020, you don't have to hold on to anything that don't want to be held on to. Everything doesn't have to be a fight. Everything does not have to be something where you constantly have to prove something to somebody. I need you to be the greatest you that you can be. I also want you to know that the moment that you made up in your mind that you were going to be committed to your success, that everything, every negative thing was going to come and try to attack that. And I need you to be strong in this season. I need you to be strong during this time. I need you to walk around with your head hung high and say to yourself, self, we're going to make it. Self, we're going to win. Self, we can do this, okay? Remember, I told you that when you get ready to take your board exam, I want you to go in there. The first thing I want you to do when you sit down in that chair with your smart self. When you sit down in that chair with your smart self, what I want you to do is sit there and, and, and get some thoughts together, center yourself. And then I want you to breathe in and breathe out. And then I want you to breathe in and breathe out. 
And I want you to say, self, work with me and not against me. For the first 30 minutes of your test, I only want you to answer the questions that you know. It's 90 questions on the test. If you know 10, you answer all 10. Y'all think I'm playing. It's 90 questions on the test. If you know 50, you answer all 50 in the first 30 minutes. Only answer the ones that you know. You need this confidence booster. You gotta boost your confidence when you first start this thing. You gotta get your foot in. You gotta let the test know that I'm here to win, okay? And not only do you need to let the test know, but you gotta let yourself know. Because sometimes your mind will begin to start thinking like, oh my God, what am I doing here? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, it's happening. Yes, it's happening. So get it together, sis. I need you to know, okay, let's stop and build up that confidence. And then once you, once you, once you do it that first 30 minutes, I want you to repeat that process until you're done, okay? And then I need you to know when you walk away from that test, when you walk away from that test, that everything that you are is not determined by that test, okay? We are going to continue to work together. We are going to continue to make sure that you get where you need to be. I got friends who have failed and they are just like down on themselves. Don't be down on yourself, friend. I'm with you, okay? But I definitely want you to know that you can do this. Don't give up on yourself. You've come too far. You've come too far, okay? There are so many people dependent on you. The next generation needs this, okay? We have to make sure that we start to create generational wealth within our families, right? Continue to be everything that you are. Continue to be who you've been called to be. I want you to continue to believe in yourself. Speak positivity over yourself. Speak love to yourself. Hug yourself. Forgive yourself and move on. Okay? Don't dwell on the past. Tomorrow is a new day. The only, the only requirement that we have is to be better than we were yesterday. That's it. Don't give up, don't give in. Continue to watch my channel, to continue to come back. I am here for you. I wanna be a resource to you. I know that everything that you have studied and that you're gonna learn on this channel will definitely help to boost your confidence. Please give me a call to register for your, your seminar and go ahead and reserve your ticket because there are limited seatings, okay? Limit seatings. 903-295-5933. It is always a pleasure when I can work with you and when I can see you. Continue to do everything that you've been doing. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. Don't let somebody just talk you out of your success, okay? It has been an absolute pleasure to be here with you today. And I look forward to continuing to work with you and to make this thing a success story. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel if this has helped you. Talk to you soon. Bye.